Hackett Garage. Good morning, Burke. How are you today? I am wonderful. Hey, hello. How are you? Welcome to Road Odyssey. I am Burke. Hope you're having a fantastic day. And here I am at the wonderful Yellow Jacket Garage, the new facility. And the wonderful proprietor of this place is Brian of, of course, Yellow Jacket Garage YouTube channel, of which I will have a link down below and other information about that channel, you know, somewhere throughout all of this good stuff. Now, we're going to visit with Brian for a minute, see what he's up to with his nice little Corvette. I'll let him go over everything that he would like to tell us about it right now. And this is a project that he is providing for everybody uh, on his channel to explain to you what he's doing and all the really neat things about this project. So that's primarily all I have at the moment. So let's get into it. All right, so this is Brian of Yellow Jacket Garage, if you haven't met him before. And what do you have to say about all this good stuff? Well, what I've got going on right now is uh, we're going to do, on this car, it's a 1962 Corvette, so those of you that know Corvettes know that this is the last year of the first generation of C1 Corvette. Uh, this car is not a, uh, it's not a survivor car, it's not an original car, it doesn't have the original engine and transmission and stuff in it, so it's already, you know, not a original. So what we're going to do with it is because from the factory, this car came out with the manual brakes and manual steering and pretty much manual everything because that's what we had back then and so I'm in the process of doing a full brake upgrade we're going to go to a four four wheel uh, vented discs and we've got we've got some of the new stainless lines that we're going to replace the brakes were done on the car recently so all this all the brake lines are new in the back the front there's a couple that we're going to for sure have to replace but anyway um, quickly to go over we're going to put in uh, Four wheel, like I said, four wheel discs, uh, power brakes. Eventually, we'll probably upgrade it to a power steering unit and just do a lot of upgrades to the car to make it a lot more fun to drive, enjoyable, and more drivable. Because those manual brakes, if you've ever driven a manual brake car, it takes a lot of pressure to get the, those things slowed down because the four wheel had uh, the drum brakes and so it's the shoes that push out, whereas the caliper brakes, they're far superior to the technology of back in the day. But remember, back then, this car was cutting edge. Um, but that edge has gotten a lot duller since then. <laughs> so. so it's an old car. It's got a pretty good size engine, 327 cubic inch, which is how much maybe horsepower today? Well, it's a, this one has with a 350 in it. Yeah, oh, a 350, Originally okay. it came with a 327, a three, I think a 350 horse 327. Yeah. We're still trying to figure out what all it's supposed to have been, but it now has a 350 in it. And so we're talking, you know, a, a couple hundred horsepower there's no it, it's not cammed or anything else so it's just a basic engine so 250 horsepower ish maybe a little bit more than that but not much and, and so so this is translating to brakes first like safety first yes right because that was the first thing when yeah. i when i saw you working on this you're like um we need to make sure it stops yes <laughs> we're making sure so. that it stops as it should um and then that it turns as it should and from there we're going to probably maintain the original gm basic block so it's the old the, the, the gen one or well, gen one whatever yeah uh, small block chevy is what's in it and we're going to retain that we'll go through it probably this fall winter time frame rebuild that engine maybe add a cam to it maybe do a little bit more um add a little horsepower to it redo the exhaust with some headers and stuff like that but um add a little bit more performance to it but we don't really want to do that until we fix the, the, the a good know. good logical progression. Yes. So you're going to have a series of videos, yes. most likely. And yep. I know you made the joke if you if you see his prior video, kind of make the joke that that some of these videos ought to be coming out before Christmas. So I you know this is May right now, right? So. Um, you know, he likes working on cars more than video I, I, editing. I, I, I editing, editing is not fun. I hate editing. It is a job. It but, is a whole other, and when you're working on this, or like me working on my house, 
you know, you could spend hours at the computer editing a video unless you just put out some piece of pookie yeah. that, you know, whatever. So, yeah. The so anyway. what I run into with my editing is that I'm trying to cut the video down without taking out any of the substance. And it's really difficult to do because stuff that, to me, I'm viewing it as somebody who does this stuff. And so my channel is kind of geared towards people that don't and are trying to learn it like me and so i've done <laughs> Which i appreciate it very much i've done yeah. all of this stuff before and it's been you know over a, my whole lifetime of doing stuff like this and so it's some of these things are second nature to me and i have to check myself and realize that some of the people watching the videos don't do it to that degree and are just trying to, to start you're a do it yourself or and it's good to see the little minutia of Oh heck, you know, not just hitting your thumb with a hammer or something or dropping that one needed bolt down in the engine or something. There's, you know, you include all the stuff that most other people cut out to make themselves look good. Brian is much more real to life. And that's what I like about your channel. Yeah, typically it's very unique. Up, and so yeah, what would the approximate value of this car be? Um, just say before and after the brake job, you know, kind of in this survivorship time of its life. Well, a job like this, the, the parts alone, when this is all done doing what we're doing, I'm gonna guess that we're probably somewhere in the neighborhood of ten to fifteen thousand dollars in parts. Now, the labor on something like that is multitudes of hours and at a you know, just say 100 bucks an hour for shop, we're probably looking at, you know, 150 hours in doing all of this oh, yeah. is what a shop would charge. So, right. Really, the, the, it's the best guess, but $30,000, $40,000. Right. You know, you've seen these cars that have been fully restored. We're not doing that with this car. We are not fully restoring it. Um, Dredd and Ben, the folks that own this car, I'm doing this because I enjoy doing it. Plus, it's Jaretta's car, and I want to make sure that for her, the car is safe to drive. Right. And that it's a pleasure to drive because you drive so the whole car. So that's keeping the cost down. Yes. So yeah. And so me, I'm not getting paid for any of this stuff. This, this is fun for me. So, and get this straight. <laughs> I, 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 I do what I do for free because I like doing it. And, you know, this... You know, the garage mahal is kind of the place that uh, it, it, it's here to have fun. It's and that's that's another reason why you're going to see on his channel when he does all the work. Just say you're wanting to watch all the videos on this car, you will see honesty in it. Because what does he have to hide? He has nothing to hide. He's not doing this to generate income off of it. There's no agenda. There's no background noise as to a bunch of BS that could be filtered out and then you you think oh well I could do this well then you find out that oh things are left out <laughs> you know it's not honest right. so I don't know is that enough on this right now do you want to go ahead and just give us a quick look around at what you've done at the moment what you're because you're getting ready for a video right now anyway yes. right? Anyway, yeah, I just kind of want to go quick over what today's uh, uh, project is I'm going to replace the drum brakes on the back of this side. And so what that entails is we're going to pull the drum off, undo the axle uh, retention bolts. We're going to pull the axle out and the, the backing plate off and everything. Do a little bit of cleanup in here, uh, pull that apart. And then we do this fun stuff. Uh, this piece here goes back on. And uh, one of these packages here, I've got the uh, no, caliper bolts. These are the retaining bolts. And so that's going to hold this piece back on there. Uh, this shim goes in there, replaces the factory shim that's in there. When this goes and, together, uh, this all bolts back onto the existing axle. That goes onto uh, there. Okay. Your axle will come through, and you'll have your axle studs poking out through these holes here. Right. This turns into your emergency brake. Okay, now, just for a teaser, this is the passenger side. This is the one that we've already done. And so you can see how much nicer this looks. This is the wheel studs I was talking about. The axle flange is right in here. That bearing couples together, but to actually get to these bolts that are back here is from the inside here is not easy. So I'm going to dive into this project here in a few minutes. Um, basically, what I'm going to do today is do the disassembly, clean okay. it all up because the cleaning and everything that goes into this takes quite a bit of time. So right. 
be prepared if you're going to do this for yourself to put it back together clean and uh other than that that's really about it as far as that one goes the actual okay. housing, and then we can pull it up this this differential does not have uh the c-clips inside in the center section and so this one is all retained on the outer side and so you pull that uh, little retain This is a world of difference. The the Willwood components they're really cool. This is the bearing cap. I've actually tightened it on there, but it comes with the bearing cap. The bearing cap fits inside the existing wheel that we've got, um, and so you see that it's a vented disc rotor. They're slotted, cross drilled, all that nice stuff. Really great components. Um, in this whole process, we've looked at there's you know a little bit of other things that we're going to address, some play in a couple of steering components and whatnot, but. Uh, some of this stuff is not available anymore, and so you have to get what you've got rebuilt, or uh, down the road we may look at completely changing the front suspension and going with something like a more of a touring car suspension that's going to be um, easy to get parts for and uh, timeless. Cool. That'll be nice. Yay. All right. Thanks for watching Road Odyssey. I appreciate it, and I appreciate Burke coming down here and uh, doing this video with me because uh, it's fun, and it's we, we enjoy it when we get together. But uh, really quick, before I close it all out, I want to go a little bit into what the car is, what it's going to become, and kind of the goal for the future. Um, you know, I talked about doing engine work and talked about doing a few other things on it, but uh, really the goal of this car is not to be a show car. It is not to be a pristine, original, unadulterated uh, um, example. It's supposed to be driven, enjoyed, and so it's going to get the brake upgrade, it's going to get the engine work, it's going to get hey, the full interior. Relax, take it easy, and I will see you later. Bye. <laughs> take 20. Hey, hello, how are you? Welcome to Road Odyssey. I am Burke, I think. <laughs> mm -hmm.